Okay guys, what's up? So today what we're going to do is I'm going to sit here and talk, but specifically we're going to talk about a topic and then what we're going to do is we're going to do an Instagram Q&A. So I've got some questions that have been asked from Instagram, I've got them screenshotted, so once we're done discussing our initial topic, we'll then go into some Q&A because there's probably not enough questions to do an extensive Q&A um, and they should be relatively quick to answer. So. What I wanted to speak about was something I posted about on Instagram yesterday and hopefully some of you will have seen that. But it's basically the idea that your body is hopefully or should be or you should aim for it to be the least interesting or useful thing about you. Okay. Now, what I mean by that and where this kind of stems from is, you know, a, a lot of people are, are, are promoters of the idea of body positivity, okay? Um, and, and, I, and I'm for that to an extent, in that, you know, it, it's a prob it's probably a net positive message to get people to try and, you know, be more positive about their bodies because, because the goal is essentially to remove any sort of negative emotion toward their appearance. However, I do think it sort of misses the point, and that's not to dis discredit any, like, successful outcomes from those approaches, but rather just the general way I like to think about it. So it's my personal opinion. Um, I think it's far more helpful to adopt a stance whereby we simply remove the emphasis on body image and, and on your aesthetic appearance um, as, a, as a, a metric of self-worth, as opposed to trying to make it a positive thing. So personally, the way I would like to think about it is that like, I am not positive about my, my body like I don't feel positive about that but instead I am simply care I simply care about other things because my values lie in other areas and hence it's not something that I give much thought to and I think that's a far more help it's a far more helpful way of approaching it and, and that's not to say that you can teach others to just do that but it's the kind of message that I'd like to promote to you is that there are so many things that you could aim at in life, okay? To be a useful person, to be a, a contributing member of society, that you're actually, you're actually of value. As in, you know, if you were to walk into an interview and someone asks you, what are your skills? You're able to tell them what your skills are, what your education is, exactly what you offer, what you bring to the table. Um, even in like a conversation amongst a group of people, if you were stranded on an island, you want to consider what exactly can I bring to the table that other people can't or that I can do better. Okay, like what am I, what am I, what is my value? Like what am I actually worth? As opposed to trying to solely bring it back to these kind of wishy-washy, like narcissistic things. Okay, because I mean, you don't need to be positive about your body to have a good life. What does that even mean? And, and, and why would that be something to aim at? So I kind of understand the idea of eradicating any negative feelings or emotions toward your body. However, I don't feel that people need to aim at that target of loving your body. Because realistically, the whole point from my perspective should be to like forget the idea of trying to love everything about yourself. Instead, why not create some something or someone? Like, why not create a person that you would respect if they were presented to you? Or that you would look at and say, you know what, that person's a valuable person. I want them on my team. I want them in my group. I want them in my circle. Um, I'd like that person to be there for me if I was in a position of, you know, danger or whatever. I think that's a better way of thinking about it. Because I think it's sort of a little bit um, hypocritical to point at point at narcissistic narcissistic aesthetic ideals that you see you know derived from Instagram and then to suggest that we should all be positive and love our bodies because it essentially takes the takes the the value that brought that brought brought about that idea so it takes the values that brought about the idea that you know someone with a six pack and big shoulders and a big chest or whatever or you know a big ass it takes the values that led to those things being like elevated onto a pedestal and tries to make them mainstream instead of saying, you know what, personally, I actually have different values and there are things that I consider to be um, worthy of aiming at, useful and admirable, respectful, 
that are unrelated to anything like that. Okay, because when personally, when I think of people that I respect, I don't consider how they look, what they wear, like what body fat percentage they are. Like it's literally irrelevant. Like it's far, it's far more important to me for for that for someone to show me like what they can do. Like like what can you do? What what can you what can you produce? Like what have you learned? What ideas do you have that I could benefit from that I think are helpful for society, for the people around me, for me personally? I think there are far better things to aim at than simply some sort of aesthetic ideal, even if that is you simply just trying to love the body that you have. Like, because again, I think it's conflicting to suggest that, oh, you know, being, being low body fat percentage isn't everything, because um, you're because you're essentially saying oh you don't want those values you don't want those values you don't want those values but then on the same note you're also saying oh we should all be positive and love our bodies you should love you should love your skin and all this sort of stuff and it's like like what if I just don't but my values in life lie elsewhere and I'd like people to respect me for other things and that I don't really care whether or not people like how I look you know like I think that's a better way of thinking about things and obviously I'm not saying that. I, I'm absolutely not suggesting that you can just watch this video to kind of adopt my personal mindset and somehow override the, you know, biological and psychological factors that might make you want to look aesthetic or whatever it is. Like, I'm not saying that. All I'm saying is that I think that's the way I like to think about it and I think that's helpful. And that's kind of what I try to get across to my clients as well because, like, to be honest, I'd rather see someone shift their focus to something productive as opposed to keeping the focus on something unproductive but trying to have a better focus on it, you know, because that's essentially what you're doing when you're saying, you know, that oh, I want to love my body because you're taking away, you're still focusing on that thing as opposed to saying, you know what, I'm actually just going to become a better whatever it is, like I'm going to become a better fireman, I'm going to become a better nurse, I'm going to, you know, Normally I get really pissed off with people at work and I've got a bit of a short fuse so I'm going to try and work on that because I think that'll benefit my career and it'll make me a more, you know, productive person at work because I won't have as much conflict with my colleagues and, you know, I'll get on better in terms of um, speaking to patients, etc. Like whatever it is, like it doesn't matter what your career is, you can still think about that. Um, and obviously like I'm not an expert on, on that side of things, all I'm telling you is my personal perspective. Um, so that's good. That's kind of the way I like to think about things. I think we need to, like, I think if you're going to try and de-emphasize the focus on specific aesthetic ideals, it's probably better to consider what your true values are and what's going to be beneficial for you in the long term, as opposed to solely keeping your focus there and trying to really work on things there. Um, I think I think it's better to, yeah, you know, address any any sort of, you know, negative. Uh, negative perspectives on that side of things, on the body image side of things, but I also think it's really important to have something that you're working towards um, in general as your bigger life mission, so to speak. And I think that's just a better, better way of thinking about it. And in general, the reason I wanted to kind of share this message was because I get a lot of messages from younger guys and, and younger girls as well, who are getting into fitness and they're, you know, very, very obsessed with their image, with their aesthetics, and they say things like, you know, I'm willing to do whatever it takes to get hashtag ripped, you know? And and I get that because I've been there, like, and I really do get it, and I empathize with anyone that is in that position because it's it's not easy. But I suppose, from my perspective, the very reason that I don't focus on those things anymore and the very reason that I don't particularly care like what my physique looks like, like within reason, obviously. Um, like the reason I, I don't particularly care about those things and the reason I don't, like, I, I'm, like I, I'm, I'm really happy to wear like just general clothes. Like I'm not, I'm not someone that gets real obsessed with fashion or, you know, cares about leaving the house in like 10 euro tracksuit pants that I bought in pennies like five years ago that I always do and my family abuse me about it. <laughs> but like I, I just like not that that's a good thing either. I, I think you should you know put some effort into into your clothes. But I mean the point is that the reason that I have that those sort of values now is is because I value other things in life and I measure my progress and my sense of self worth based on other other things. 
Um, it wasn't that I had to have some big massive reframing of my mindset towards my body. It was simply that as I began to focus on other things in life and other metrics of my progress and of my worth and of, you know, and from looking inside and saying, you know, what would make me respect me? It was other things that I worked on, you know, including things like, you know, just general studying, the building of triage, you know, how, how, how valuable I feel I can be in terms of the fitness industry, in terms of like, what can I produce for you watching this? And that's going to be helpful um, in terms of like college, obviously, you know, finishing off physio, hopefully going on to study medicine and the longer term goals for triage. Like they're all the things that I kind of care about that I, that I think, you know, this makes you a more valuable person. Um, and, and yeah, I think, I think that's, that's just the way you should try and view things because I feel, I feel, I feel sim sympathy for younger guys and girls getting into, or like, especially coming out of secondary school, even in secondary school and going into college and kind of, especially if you're within the fitness sphere, your immediate inclination is to expose yourself to the likes of people that are just, you know, posting selfies every day and don't really have much else to offer. Um, like that's the natural inclination, understandable inclination. And I don't really know how to solve that other than trying to put out more positive messages. Um, because I think, I think it is inherently harmful. Like I think it's a, it's a net negative that that is what people aim at because I used to be of the perspective and I think a lot of people are of the perspective, the perspective that isn't it great that more people are getting into health and fitness. And part of me is like, yeah, but part of me is like, no, as in it's good that more people are adopting positive health, health behaviors in terms of doing good things with their nutrition, doing good things with exercise. However, I suppose from my own biased personal perspective, what I see a lot of the time is people who, yeah, they do these things, but they don't do them from, from the right angle, if you get me, as in, as in, although certain behaviors may be a net positive for health, they don't adopt those for those reasons. And hence the very focus of everything that they do is on an aesthetic end point. So essentially, if there wasn't that aesthetic endpoint, it's unlikely that the people would be adopting the same behaviors. And I think that has the potential to become a net negative because essentially what you do is you measure, you measure your progress and you, me you measure the progress or the outcomes based on those behaviors purely from an aesthetic standpoint. So because there are many inputs that go into it, including exercise, managing your nutrition, you know, sleeping, managing stress, making time to do all of those things, your only, your only metric is that aesthetic progress and the fact that you're probably comparing to the 1% on Instagram who happen to have exceptional physiques, what you're essentially doing is giving yourself a, like probably an unachievable outcome. You're measuring based solely on that outcome and you're investing a significant portion of your life into chasing that and the problem with that is that you don't have the same I guess cognitive resources and literally time resources to allocate to things that are actually going to make you a better person and a more productive person and a successful person in the long run and that to me is where the problems come in because it's great to say that oh it's great that more people are getting involved in health and fitness but they're not doing it on the side they're doing it as their main thing, which seems to take away from their ability to engage in college, in work, etc. And the only reason I say that is because they're the types of messages that I get from people in my DMs and even from clients, because that is, that is the way in which they perceive their fitness journey to be. They perceive it to be at the center of their life and they're willing to do anything to achieve a certain aesthetic outcome, which is based on a measure of the 1%, which is the same as me going to college and going to college every day and wondering why I don't have as much money as Warren Buffett and, you know, becoming, you know, depressed because of that, because I'm like, oh God, fuck's sake, this is another shit day because every day is spent measuring based on someone who is the 1% or the 0.0001%. <laughs> But I suppose that's why all of this is important. I don't think we should become too optimistic based on 
health behaviors in isolation because the health behaviors are part of something that isn't necessarily healthful in the long run. Um, and that's, that's especially from the perspective of psychological health because very often, all, like, like the general overemphasis on aesthetics probably isn't the best thing from a psychological health perspective, but also even bigger than that, I think a lot of people are shortchanging themselves in terms of what they could achieve in life by placing too much emphasis on the fitness aspect of their life, even though they're not doing that with the with this, with any sort of athletic goals because like it's understandable when someone puts a such a huge amount of their efforts into um, training nutrition etc when it's aimed at playing a sport that they potentially have a future in as opposed to solely their body image um, like I think that can be it can be problematic for uh, for young people especially because I mean if you take a sample of a thousand young people who are obsessed with the gym how many of them are genuinely going to build fruitful careers in the fitness industry as a result of their physique? Because obviously that can help you build a, a career in the fitness industry, but like it's, it's not a significant proportion. Um, and I say this from the perspective of someone who came into the fitness industry with a heavy aesthetic focus. Um, and thankfully I do have a career related to the fitness industry, but I've seen so many people along the way get into it you know, decide, oh, well, personal trainer is what I'm going to be, and then start personal training, and it's it's just not their thing. As in, they don't want to do the things that are required for you to be a successful personal trainer. Um, like, they're, they're interested in, in the physique side of things. They want to help people with their physiques, but what they don't realize is that, okay, most people that are going to be your clients are not like you. Like, they're just not like you. They don't They don't have that same drive to be as ripped as possible like they, they don't really care about that and suddenly you realize oh jesus i have to i have to learn a lot more things i have to change my perspective on fitness if i want to be a good coach etc etc and that's not for everyone and i've seen a lot of people get into it and then back away and try and adopt new jobs and suddenly they don't like they don't have a, they don't have a degree or they don't have a great degree because of the lack of emphasis that they placed on it in earlier years and now they end up they end up working in a in a job that maybe like they they just barely got that they're not interested in that they don't see a future in and I think that's I think that's quite sad um, and and that's that's why I feel kind of passionate about this because I kind of look at you know what would my alternative what would my alternative situation be had I not had interests in the science side of of fitness and and specifically health. Um, and healthcare in general, because um, I think that's where a lot of my interests lie. Like I'm, I'm glad I had interest there because I kind of consider, you know, what would have happened if I went to college and I just continued to put all of my emphasis on fitness and you know not really care about college and stuff. And I'm like, fuck, like that 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 leads to potentially dark outcomes, and, and I don't I don't want that for people. Like if you watch my shit, like I want you to be a fucking savage in life, and and it's not about fitness. Like I don't I don't give a fuck like what you look like. Like I care if something I say can help you to go and live your life better because while I'm very interested in fitness and the science of muscle building and strength and all this sort of stuff, I'd rather see people go and have fruitful careers and maintain health behaviors along with that because I think that's a better way of living life. And I mean, if strength training is a part of that, which it should be, uh, then that's great. But um, I'd, I'd rather see that than someone who has the best physique, you know, around town, but kind of they hate their job like they're not really interested in anything other than going to the gym so i suppose like that's that's the biggest message i think if you were to take away some take-home points and i'm probably going to ramble on after i give you these take-home points but it'll bring me back to some sort of a <laughs> straight straight road but basically the messages are if you want to try and be positive about your body that's fine but i'd rather see you simply emphasize other things in your life which are likely to be more helpful for you in the short and long term Two, it's great to adopt um, health and fitness behaviors, but it's probably more productive in the long run for you to do that with an emphasis on your health and on supporting um, you living a better, more productive life as opposed to solely chasing aesthetics. Um, if you want to chase aesthetics and you think that's going to help you adopt a career in, or get a career in fitness, 
great, that's cool, but recognize that a very small percentage of people are actually successful in terms of making, in terms of having a fruitful career in the fitness industry. Um, I'll make the, this the next point. If we're looking at careers in the fitness industry, they vary and an even smaller percentage of people are going to have a successful career based solely on their image in terms of you know being a fitness model or whatever. Um, and the other, the other branch of careers is, is generally related to being a successful trainer or someone who is able to put out high quality information, both of which require you to do far more than simply work on your image. Okay, because there are plenty of trainers that look great, but they are shit trainers and don't know anything. But there are also a large proportion of trainers who you know don't have particularly impressive physiques, but they're damn good trainers, they're damn interested, they care about people, they care about advancing their learning, etc. So if that's you, they're the things I'd probably be focusing on and they'd probably be aiming at um, if you do think that you're going to have a career in the fitness industry. So, I mean, it's not enough to, to, to simply focus on your physique and the behaviors that lead to you having a better physique. And I suppose they would be my biggest take home points. So what I would love for you to do if you're watching this video, especially if you're, you're young, you know, you're, you're not really sure about, you know, whether or not you want a career in fitness, I would just suggest that if you're in college, put effort in, just do, you know, put effort in, try to make yourself a better you beyond the gym. It's a, it's a far, far better way of living life. Trust me. Um, that, that would be the, the thing. And I'd, I'd like for people to try and aim at something that is, that is useful, productive, likely to lead to the greatest amount of success and obviously fulfillment. Um, because I think a lot of people get deluded into thinking that they're going to love a career in fitness because they love going to the gym. And they're simply not synonymous. You know, you could love going to the gym, but you could hate being a trainer. There are plenty of people who work as lawyers and doctors and bin men and firemen and nurses that love going to the gym, but they don't want to make a career out of it. Um, so yeah, I, I guess that I guess that is that is that is the, the biggest. That's all of the messages that I wanted to share. Um, hopefully, you find them helpful. And I suppose the final thing I'd like to touch on is that, like, you can get help in terms of you know psychological or psychotherapeutic interventions that can support you, kind of overcoming any obsessive tendencies towards fitness and nutrition etc like you can get help for that so I wouldn't rule it out like if I was someone that my, I felt if I felt I was sabotaging my life by my overemphasis on an obsessive approach to fitness then I definitely wouldn't rule out um, those options because if they're going to liberate you from something that is holding you back and sabotaging your progress in life then it's very likely that, that that would be a damn good idea um, to essentially give you a better life. So, guys, there's more to life than fitness. There really is, and that's from someone that is trying to make a career in fitness. Um, you know, and, and it's something that I've definitely been realized myself more recently, you know, partic particularly with the goal of going on to study medicine and particularly with, you know, finishing off my degree in physio um, and just the general things that I'm kind of interested in. It definitely gave me a, 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 a much broader perspective on what's kind of important in life and, and what, 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 is, what is valuable to pursue. Because um, I think you can get caught up in the bubble of the fitness industry thinking that the things that we talk about are really important. And most of the time, they're, they're relatively insignificant things and they're not going to emphasize wider public health very much. You know, like we, we get caught up with things like tracking macros and stuff and we have our own little arguments. Oh, should it be this much or this much or should you track using this or this? And it's like, what you're talking about has no, has no effect on general public health. So it's like, the argument becomes redundant when people say, you know, oh, I just like, I just like affecting people's health and I, I, I want to make as many people as healthy as possible. And it's like, yeah, if that's the goal, you're going about it the wrong way. 
And I say that to my younger self, who believed that too, who thought that, you know, the more people we get, you know, focusing on doing all of these things, the more we can, you know, improve public health and reduce obesity and all this sort of stuff. It's like, yeah, 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 that's, that's not how it's going to happen. <laughs> um, you need, you need more, you need, you need bigger messages, you need wider messages, you need to think them through far more than simply, you know, what's the best base of a single research study, or, you know, what is the evidence-based perspective on macro tracking. Um, it, there's, there's more to it. Um, but yeah, I'm just rambling at this point. So I hope you found this video helpful. I hope it kind of wakes some people up. Um, I know I'd like to have watched this when I was, you know, 18, 19. Um, but at the same time, I probably wouldn't have listened, you know, and I think, I think that's fair. Like, I think if you're, if you're an 18 year old, you know, you just finished your leaving cert, you just started college and you're obsessed with fitness, like you probably, you probably haven't experienced enough yet to be able to grasp the perspective that I'm trying to share. And maybe I haven't experienced enough to, to grasp other perspectives either. Like I'm totally open to that. I'm young. I might change my mind on all this, but I do think it's difficult for people to look beyond what they're exposed to on their social media feeds every day. Um, I think it's difficult for people to consider that not being not being ripped is acceptable, <laughs> and that you know all the people you follow on YouTube are not what you want to be like. Not, not that you don't want to be like them, but I mean it's difficult to for you to accept that at eighteen that that's not what you want or that mightn't be what you want. Because I don't think at 18 you kind of, I don't think you're able to appreciate like what, what the value is in a, in a productive career beyond something that seems really sexy, especially with social media. Like I think everyone wants to be the entrepreneur that travels the world and lives a laptop lifestyle. And I mean, the, the thing is like, like I could do that. Like we could do that with triage because we have an online business as in like, if I wanted to, I could move to Bali tomorrow, live on the beach from my laptop and make a like and, and have a living wage, a successful life by by whatever measure you like to use. And I could do that. Like that like that's that's an option. And every day and and, and, and constantly that, that reality is there. It's it's like a carrot that's in front of your face. It's like, all right, you know, are you sure you want to you know, finish off this physio degree, you know, go on and study medicine, you know, work as a doctor for a few years. Are you sure you want to do this thing? Or why don't you just go and live the laptop life in Bali and stay lean year round and take loads of photos on the beach and increase your following and continuously have a more successful business? Like, why don't you just do that? And I think at 18, I think it's, it's virtually impossible to wrestle with how, how you would not want that as in like even my own sister I think like she like if she was in my position like she'd be gone <laughs> or she'd be she'd be doing something <laughs> along those lines and even like I know a lot of people that, that would that would just fucking take that carrot as soon as it comes and I know in the past I've really wanted to do that and I've, I've made taken decisions that have pushed me towards that however thankfully I have different values now and I however however thankfully I think I have different views now, different values now. And I think at 18, it's difficult to grasp how that would be a thing. Like, I think it's difficult to grasp why you'd want to subject yourself to years and years and years and years of really hard work that isn't going to be that rewarding in the short term. Um, it's going to make your life more difficult than it could be. It's going to take away your leisure time. Um, it's going to give you terrible work-life balance, etc. It's going to keep you in Ireland. I think it's difficult to grasp how that could be somehow superior or a better option than going to live in Bali and living on the beach with a laptop or whatever. Um, I think I think it's difficult to grasp that. And obviously it depends on your own value structure as well. Like I mean there are plenty of people that I respect that live that lifestyle that I think, you know, they're fucking they're doing good things. Um they're living the life they really wanted and I'm like I have the utmost respect for that. Like I really do anyone that's living the life that they truly want to live. Um, the only thing I'm trying to help people avoid and that I'd like people to avoid and then trying to help myself avoid is living a life that you don't really want to live and that you're going to look back in 50 years and think, ah, should have done that. Um, I suppose that's my general thought process and I, I'm not going to ramble anymore. I, I said that like five minutes ago, but I hope this video was helpful, guys. I'm not going to do the Q&A because I've been recording for 30 minutes. Um, 
But yeah, um, if you don't see me again before Christmas, I hope you have a lovely Christmas. Um, I'm going to Belarus today a week um, with the Marin Chernobyl project, trip number six. I'm absolutely pumped to see the kids, little Ruslana, all the kids. Um, but yeah, um, thank you for watching. I hope, I hope it gives you something to think about, especially going into the new year. Um, and just remember, number one, be happy. And number two, it's too easy.